He's got it. Can feed it off here to McCallan. Went back on the left. Should have gone early. And that won't be a score. Plenty of Robins back there, and they should open up things here. He goes over to Dodds, does Loom. Dodds normally can kick a country mile. This time he kicks it out of bounds. So a good chance to go down to John Kenny on the boundary. Johnny spotted something happening again. Yes, I was having a look, in fact, at Adrian Dean. He got a thump over the right eye. I can't see any sign of blood, and I can't see any reason why he shouldn't be back on the ground. Terrific work, JK. He's really on the job down there on that boundary line. The kick, having a shot for goal. Not a bad one, either by McCallum. And a minor score. So, Scotty McCallum, we saw him come up from the back line and kick two or three, as we can see the ice back on Dean. But a minor score to the Roos. They would have loved a goal. 34 playing nine. Fry's gone on to the ball as a ruckman, Rob. Yeah, not a bad move because the other bloke's nearly the best player on the ground. Bugs marked the kick in. Clarence have had a bit of the ball on the last two or three minutes. Well, they're not out of this game by any means, uh, Rob. Bugging towards Hurd, and he'll have a set shot from 40. Definitely needs to kick it. He's got a slight breeze at his back. He'll need to uh, probably aim at the left-hand goalpost as he, as he sights it up. But uh, he's in half a dozen kicks and really needs to drill this one to uh, to get them that six points closer, obviously, but uh, give them some sort of lift going into that quarter time break. Duncan Hurd from 40 metres. He's put it through. That's a class kick. A terrific kick from that side of the ground. The umpire, goal umpire didn't even move. So they're back in the game, as we thought. And uh, it'll be very interesting. The last couple of minutes, I'd just like to see, look, Rhys Jones has set this up from the word go by putting himself in the centre. Got four or five quick possessions. Maybe with a minute or so to go, I don't know whether we've got enough time, but maybe put himself in and try and snag another goal. Get it down to Gibson and Strickland again. Well, they've certainly got plenty of loose players. In my mind, the Clarence players just haven't taken any responsibility at all with the matchups and uh, just too many Robins running free for mine. 19 points to the Robins. And we're well into the time on period. About 30 minutes gone as Proctor goes away on his left boot, looks to the wing, over the line, out of bounds. So the Roos are going into, into attack again. They've got to do it quickly. Only a couple of seconds, you would think, left in this quarter. Cooney. Down towards Adams. Adams and Proctor. Winter's in there. Winter picks up now. Away goes Todman. Good handball out wide to Loon. Loon's got some room to move. And he finds Olds. Was he off? That's yeah, the luck. question. McCallum said he was. What's the umpire say? So too does he. So the free kick going to the Roos. Well, he was off Wilco. Kremer had made a lead out of the centre square and is about 40 metres clear on the 50 metre line. The boy just had to try and get it to him and it was a little bit of bad luck. But they're making the play and that's important for North. McCallum to half forward, Adams. Oh, bit of a clash there between Adams and Hawkins. Things might have up here. Yeah. Cooney's just thrown one. And let's stay with this. Oh, not too serious. Two from home there. I thought I was going to see a repeat of the 1990 AFL Grand Final. No, I don't think so. They still want to go on. That's unnecessary. They should be getting back into their coaches for instructions, especially the Clarence players. I see Andrew Scott there wants to chase Rhys Jones. If I was Rhys Jones, I'd be running back my players into here, getting them closer together, and be making my delivery before the even Clarence players had even thought about it. And uh, that's just not on by uh, Andrew Scott and Darren Winter there. It's quarter time, 5 4 34. Clarence 2 3 15. The Robins simply superb in that quarter. Yeah, very good that quarter. They just won enough around the middle of the ground to, to set it all up. Strickland's been good in the forward line. Reese Jones started very well. Okay, we'll be back with the 93 grand final in just a few moments, but here's Karen Ty. Yeah, I know, Rick, but there's a lot of things going on. Huh? Isn't. 
Okay, back here at quarter time. Thanks very much, Karen. 2 3 15, Clarence and North Launceston. Five goals for 34. Robbie Shaw, why North Launceston established that good lead? Well, look, as we spoke about before the game, uh, Rob, it was just terrific to see Reese Jones. You know, we haven't been critical of him, but we really did put it on him to come up with something to take the, uh, the onus off the Clarence players. And uh, it was great. The first thing he did was put um, himself into the centre square. He's the captain coach. He's responsible for the performance of the team. And that was just, from a coaching point of view, just great to see. And he's reaped the rewards from that. The other thing that happened was that the kid that was badly beaten by Dean in the second semi-final in Ahern has really stood up to Dane, number eight. He has been terrific. And he's brought into the game the, at the fall of the ball. You have blokes like Kremis, Skosin, Todman, Simpson and Loon have been outstanding. Uh, I'm really pleased for the North Lawn System Footy Club. I know I, I coach the Clarence Footy Club, but I just like to see reward for effort, and they have been terrific. They've lost their last two grand finals they've played in, and they're getting uh, rewarded for having a go, and I'd be very, very happy if they kept going and played the way they did for the rest of the game. No multiple goal scorers yet. Kremer, Aldenoff, Strickland, Thorne and Todman for the Robins, Holdsworth and Hurd for Clarence, and that was an important uh, kick in the last few minutes from Duncan Hurd. Gary, uh, uh, Robbie spoke from the Clarence point of view. What about from the Roos? Well, I think they've got some major deficiencies around the middle of the ground. If you had, had a chance to go through the statistics, you would find that they they would really be struggling to have uh, their on-ball players having more than four or five possessions. Hurd's got six. Todman's tagging Wade, and uh, Todman's had nine possessions. Wade's only had three, so I'd be looking to do something with Scotty Wade. My bet would be to give him the job on Kremis Gotham to free up Holdsworth and let him get around the ground and play as a centreman that we know he can play as and perhaps take Simpson and get into the uh, the possession getting process himself. You can see the difference in the stats there. There's, uh, there's a lot going in the way of uh, North Launceston with marks. Handball was much the same. 19 free kicks. There's a lot of free kicks in the first 30 minutes of footy. The hit outs go on Young Dean's way. OK, let's now go down to the boundary line and first off, Peter Chisnell on the North Launceston camp. Yes, Rob, uh, Rhys James, the call in there was minute by minute. We've just got to keep attacking the ball minute by minute. Uh, obviously, it's a call that they've planned and uh, he's just said, well, I don't want you to be involved in any silly skirmishes. We keep the tackles below the shoulders, above the knees and we attack the ball. He said, I will send any player off that doesn't do it. He said, we have got to get straight at the ball all the time. Minute by minute. Minute over now to John Kennedy in the other camp. Well, certainly as far as Clarence were concerned, I wouldn't say it was a case of panic, but it was a case of desperation indeed. In fact, Stevie Wright spent most of his time with the bench team while Darren Winter was rousing the players, and then it was left to Grant Fagan to tell them about the moves they were going to make and why they were making those moves, and then Stevie Wright made it very clear to his players he was totally disappointed with their lack of effort. And he told them what he expected and he Thank wanted at this corner. Thank you. John Kenny on the boundary line and Peter Chisnell with him. Providing the colour at ground level. Two goals, 3.15, Clarence. The hot favourites, they were rated about 5-2 to two on before this game. North Launceston playing better than their 7-4. to four. They lead 5-4-34. Rhys Jones back in the centre too. He's just to the right of the screen. So he's going to open up each quarter, no doubt, in the middle of the ground. The Robins are in attack first through Davies. Davies, long kick down to the half-forward line. Strickland's the target. Hull picks up well onto the left boot it goes and as normal when Hull has a look upfield and doesn't see any moves afoot over the line goes the footy. Big crowd in here though at North Hobart. Very colourful crowd indeed. Richie to do the ruck work. Fry's the one that wins out though. Todman is all alone. He's got plenty of time too. Can just about sit down for a cuppa in the opening seconds of the second quarter and a good mark taken by Thorne courageous one because he heard them coming but he stood his ground kept his eyes on the footy and he's got the rewards he's going to kick from about 50 meters you can see he decides to kick out to the leading gibson good lead by gibson he found the spot led to it but he's put himself on a very difficult angle did quite well though, Wilco. I know he's, he's put him on an angle, but as we see, we're right behind. He's got plenty of goal space open to him. But he did hold the ball up, and he did wait for the lead instead of wasting the ball where it could have got knocked over the boundary line. So Gibson would love to open up with a goal. Kick a ripper from the boundary line. First blood again in the second quarter to the Robins, and they couldn't have asked for a better start. Just a start that Stevie Wright wasn't looking for. He would have been looking for the ball to be cleared out in the centre and going his way. 
terrific uh, user of the football, Gibson. You can see the deliberation there as he runs in and the ball just didn't deviate. It went straight through the middle. Six goals in uh, 32 minutes of football is not a bad return for some uh, very, very good work around the midfield. And before the game, the people who thought Clarence will win, uh, would win were wondering where North Launceston would find their goals. Well, the answer to that, quite simply, is that they're sharing them around. Six goal scorers. 25 points the difference. Ahern doing beautifully. Thorne boots them forward again. It might sit for Loon. And the classy youngster on the left boot. It's two on one here. Reese Jones. Oh, well done, Andrew Scott. Thumped it away. He was under all sorts of pressure then. Holdsworth, though, gives it away. Mucks it up a bit. Todman to Kremer. And Reese Jones has got it. And he'll kick from 40. Just a quick comment, Rob. Young McCallum just hasn't got the pace to go with Loon. He, uh, Loon's running away from him. He's spending a lot of time being at least three and four metres away from McCallum, who has to play a lot tighter. Yes. Strickland on the lead. He won't get there. Have to do it at ground level. Thorne. Simpson. There's another one. Or oh, throws it in. It was paid. And Brownless will come back. So Clarence weathering the storm there. They looked in all, all sorts of pressure there. He attacked the ball pretty well too, did Hull. As you can see, a Clarence doll is looking pretty downcast at the moment, isn't it? Must have got it from you, Rob. You normally go to bed with one of those, don't you? <laughs> Chance, though, for the Robins. Davies, the backman, has a shot for goal. Well, good strength by Gibson. Couldn't bring the mark in. Brownless just keeps it in. No, he doesn't. Gee, they've made more moves, Clarence. They've got Bugs gone down into the forward line. Spearman's picked him off. Cooney's gone off the ground. Young Williams has gone into the forward pocket. And uh, Matthew Jones has now gone on to Glenn Johnson on the wing. The Robins deep in attack. Oldenoff goes high. Winter. Oh, he's, the ball's taken from him. Holding the ball is the result. He didn't do enough, said the umpire. And the free kick's going to Simpson. Well, the Roos seem to be uh, half asleep, don't they? They just seem to be taking things so, so casually. Second to the ball, Wilkie, and uh, paying the penalty on the scoreboard. Marcus Simpson is on the boundary line. We saw from the opposite side of the ground. Gibson thread run through only uh, minutes ago. Let's see what's going to happen here, mate. So Robbie Shaw said it's going to be a goal. Never it moved. Could be right. Never it could moved. Be right. Fantastic goal. Well, tell me what's going to happen with the next one, Robbie. Looked into the crystal ball and saw that coming. Simpson's got a goal, and the Robins continue on their merry way. And Shorey, what would you do if you were Clarence? What, what, what have they got to do? They've made a lot of moves. Players are just nowhere near where they started. Well, what, well what David, they're only, they're only two goals away from being... Look, it's not the end of the world. We've got a lot of footy in front of us. Seven goals to two is not an insurmountable lead. But as you know, in grand finals, if you can get away to a good start, and even if the side does peg you back, it's very, very often the case that you hang on and win this game. And uh, But I think you've alluded to it. These little blokes are still running free. Reese Jones on a half-forward flank now. A uh, Hearn thumps it in towards uh, the centre of the ground. And we'll have to restart things again. Reese Jones is back, back out of the pack. Cullen's got the job on him now. So Reese Jones, this is his fourth opponent. And we've only, we've barely played 35 minutes of footy. So Gene Fair will bounce again. Fry gets it to Wade, but he's beautifully tackled. Gee, they're very disciplined today, North Launceston. Brownless. Beaten to it by Olds. He keeps it in, does he? No, gives it away to Holdsworth. And that just hugs the line, and Davies won't be able to keep it in. Davies just walking quietly away. As you can see, a couple of people scratching their faces. Must be Clarence supporters, because they're saying, what's gone wrong? We expected a different start than this. But it's been all the Robins. Hurd's been a good player, though, for the Roos. Kicks to the half-forward line. Adams with a chance. Handballs to Bug. Oh, good tackling. The backman come down to uh, just mop it up for the Robins. Spearman's there. It's holding the ball, though. They've been pretty hot on this, the Umpies. Laying over the ball, Wilkie, and didn't make any attempt to knock the ball out. Good position. Sean Williams loves a goal. He knows where the big sticks are as well. Good kick from around about 45 metres, 40 metres from goal. So the distance should be no problem. Kick from Williams. Well, as I say that, the ball falls short. Bark. Well, comes out of the pack with a handball to Richie. Richie on the left boot. Stands, delivers a point. They would have loved one there. 
complete contrast with what happens in the Clarence forward line as, to, as distinct from what happens down the North Launceston end. They get their goals with a lot of system, a little bit of fluency. As Clarence is starting to scramble their shots. Here's Loon on the rove. Aldenoff's the leading target. Wasn't a good kick. Aldenoff might come back on it. He's got to try and beat Brownless. And the wily Brownless does the defensive thing very well indeed. 7-4 to 2-4. North one system by five goals. And who would have expected this? Aldenoff loses it. Holdsworth to Wright. Hasn't done much yet, Stevie Wright. But this is better. Cullen towards Wade. That'll be downfield, I think. No, play's gone on. It's Rhys Jones got his number taken. He has. Him or Johnny Cullen or both. Trying to look at the umpire in the middle who had the book out. Play further up the field. Nothing in it, I don't think. They're both talking to each other now. No. I think it might have been an attempt rather than a, a contact thing <laughs> made. Johnston from half back out towards the boundary line. It's still in. McCallum picks it up to right. Gets it to Cullen. Loves to kick it long. Johnny Cullen blasts away towards full forward. Richards backing back. He might kick it off the ground. Goal to Clarence. Well, the big leg spinner did the Robins defenders in there as it's on behind play. But a much needed goal to Mark Richards, and that might give the young full forward a bit of confidence. Well, as I said, uh, Rob, that's only four goals for difference. It's not an insurmountable lead. And we just hope that uh, Clarence can fight their way back in. As I said, they're not playing anywhere near their best. North Launceston are playing terrific footy. But four goals is nothing in today's footy. And uh, if they can kick the next one or two, then we've got a real ball game. We'll have a look at Richards with this. The leg spinner. You wouldn't know Rob Waters played cricket with him, would you? Stevie Wright getting into the game the last couple of minutes. Down to the forward line to Richards again. Well, the league spinner tries to be a soccer player. And what happened? On with the game. Heard. Tackled well. Well, through comes Cullen. Throws it to Jones. And it's got to be a free kick. Wasn't much subtlety about that. Rob Waters on a Saturday night late. Very, very blunt. Kick across the centre of the ground. McCallum goes high. Right again at ground level. Starting to get his hands on the ball a little bit more now. Stevie Wright, he's had about three possessions in the last couple of minutes. Definitely holding the footy on that occasion, though. In towards full forward, Holdsworth's back there. And takes the easy mark. Out wide to Cullen, who's done some good things since coming on. Involved in that last effort. Up towards Buck, but he was always out positioned by this man, Todd Spearman. They've really got to look at Adams leading further down the ground. He can't stay at home at centre half forward on this small ground. Spearman towards Aldenoff. And Winter chips in and takes a good mark. Body work from Brownless pretty good too. It's a good sign for Clarence. I think the game's uh, reached a star, mate. It's going backwards and forwards between half back. And if Clarence can just break through for the next goal, that's, you know, uh, Scotty Adams, as Davo said, has got to get more involved. Loon in towards centre half forward. Thorne puts it out in front of Jason Gibson. Will he get away from Daniel Holm? Holmes a terrier-like defender. And Holm has won that little battle. Good and umpiring. he kicks it to Williams. Good umpiring. Williams from 50 metres in the North Launceston half. Kicks across the centre. Davies in front. Or just handballs it back. There's a couple of Robins there. They keep it in too. Proctor, good play from him. Kicks long to Oldenoff. Stevie Wright's going to be trampled, but stands and marks well. Handballs off to Hurd. Heard going across the ground. Cooney's the target. When there's Bark, he runs into a wall in the mark with a free kick to a hurl. The tackling's been a feature all day so far, Wilco. If they can keep it up, they can win this premiership. Holds goes across to Simpson. Simpson to centre half forward. Over the back, Holdsworth. The Roo's starting to improve. They've had a look at it, and now they're starting to get back into the game. And, Jim, you only have to go back to 89 when you were coaching, Gary, and you gave Hobart six goals start and then uh, went on with it. Eight goals down, ten minutes into the second quarter. Got up to win by five. And we've heard all about it ever since. OK, Todman <laughs> in towards full forward. Top, on off. Top kick, top kick. Fantastic play by the young bloke. Yeah, had an opportunity. Really, really giving way the run around, isn't he? Yeah, sure. He Wade's hardly had a touch. And uh, as I said at quarter time, Todman had nine possessions and Wade only had three, but it was a terrific centre. He's holding that hip. And he doesn't look very fit. 
was Mate, a courageous effort. There's a young kid in the grand final. He'll go all the way. He's been fantastic. His running's great. Directly in front. He's got to learn to kick, though. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Oldenoff, who was sensational earlier on in the year. Let's now go down to Peter Chisnell on the boundary line. Yes, uh, Reese Jones obviously uh, dislocated a couple of fingers, but he's had them put back in. He's back on the ground again now, so back in the business. Okay. Wonder how he dislocated the fingers. Scott waiting for the ball. As you can see, Reese Jones just itching to get back into it. Scott, one dummy start. Now goes out to the tiered side. A couple of the roos out there. Ground level low loon. Off the table to Thorne. Stevie Wright starting to get into it, Davo, isn't he? Three or four grabs in the last four or five minutes to Winter. The Robins, the handball comes out. It's a good one, too. Simpson down towards the full forward, Strickland, but in the back of Scott went Strickland. And Scott wants the, full, wants the footy. He's a bit silly, though. He wants to fight as well. Well, I don't know what he's doing, Wilco. This is the grand final. You've got to get the ball. Look, he's a good kid. He's a good footballer. Let's get on with the game. To Cullen, to Hurd, Hurd marks. Half back flank. Spearman's going to come over the back with the fist. Reese Jones to Ahern. Ahern's got good mobility for a big fellow. Across to Roney. Roney's kick looking oh. for Gibson. Palmer's held. He hasn't got the footy, but he's got a free kick, and that's better. It was a good effort then. If he didn't get a hand in it, it was a goal to Rowan Thorne running onto the ball. Cooney's been quiet and he kicks it out towards the half forward line. Williams, the kick will go against you and will be taken by Hawkins. 7 5 to 3 4. 25 points the difference. It was 18 at quarter time. Up towards Oldenhoff, thumped away by Brownless. Olds though, he can kick it a mile. In towards full forward, Strickland might shiver to throw for a goal. Oh, and he got one from Andrew Scott. Well, we know how long Olds can kick the ball, and he just got enough uh, freedom to size it all up. And some good shepherding work in the goal square by Strickland. Got one to go on with. You can see the acceleration by Olds in the replay. Bounced in the goal square. Strickland just kept Scott away from it. We didn't see it on screen, but he definitely caught one in the lower abdomen. That wouldn't worry him too much. Uh, with five goals halfway through the second quarter. Very good lead. Old off again. Terrific play out of this. At centre half forward. In the centre again, it was interesting. I know Kremis Gothen then was, uh, came in and just uh, had a chat to the uh, Clarence fellas and said, have a look at the scoreboard, fellas. And uh, that wouldn't please the men in the red and white either because they're not really going for the footy at the moment. They're using the physical stuff and it's not paying off. Adams goes out wide to Wade. Wade from the wing. Drop punt kick didn't go where he expected. And the mark taken by Davies. They're in front and they've got the mark again. Scotty Adams has been moved to centre half back. Brownless has gone to centre half forward. They definitely need something across their half forward line. You've seen how they've chopped, chopped it off with a good mark from Davies. They need a lift. Davies kicks to the centre of the ground. The only player really going up was Winter. Ball comes out though to Reese Jones. Kick he'd rather forget about to Kremerskofen. Over to Simpson. Can't do much with it. Players really throw themselves onto the footy. One of the things that's impressed me to today, sure, is trying to cut across you. North Francis are much better with their quick handball today. They've got people around the footy, they feed it out. Been the key. The ball has hit the ground courtesy of uh, Ahern and their quick hands, lightning reflexes at the fall of the ball. Totally outdone Clarence in that area. Tackling's been pretty good too, although Winter's getting himself a free kick on this occasion. It's nearly been the perfect game. It has nearly been the perfect game by North Launceston all over the ground. Winter towards half forward, looks for Ritchie. Got to beat three of them, that's very difficult to do. Bug on the row, Ritchie the second effort. We'll have a bounce. Gee, I thought Ritchie held on to that long enough. Then. Yeah, I would have paid that mark. But then again, I'm looking for anything from Clarence's point of view now. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, the rest of us better go for the Robins if we've got a bit of <laughs> biasness there. Davo's going for the Robins. Oh, where he has. I've got to get him back into the game somehow, Rob. OK, well, we'll be trying. <laughs> Roaning. But North Fox has to be tremendous so far. That wasn't too good a proc, though. got out of it. Todman kicks it out of bounds into this huge crowd. It's a very, very big crowd. Upwards of towards 15. I was only about 4,000 out last year, fellas. Bug on centre wing. Back and towards half forward. 
Richards late or Cooney could have taken that with him. And that's the sort of play they need in their forward line. They need a little bit of zip. They need somebody picking the ball off the pack and running into open goals. We've seen North Launceston do. Cooney's got to be that spark. Young Williams in the pocket's got to be the other player to lift them. See the players just dispersing as umpire fair does the bouncing. The Hearn wins out, and that's where he aimed for. Dave, why do you think it is that, like Clarence have come out and uh, they've been the best side all year? Every time there's a physical contest, they want to go on with it in some other way, shape, or form. It's just their concentration at the game can't be too flash. Well, here they go through Wade. Wade kicks in towards goals. Well, does it well, McCallum? He nearly did, and he held on too long, said the umpire, or did he throw it? Free kick to North Launceston, though. Todman with the ball. 53 playing 22. The Robins by 31 points. Todman kicks in the direction of Spearman. A quick hand were good from Johnson to a